Good morning and welcome to worship on this Trinity Sunday, June 7th, 2020. It seems harder and harder to believe that we are already in the month of June, but here we are. I'm delighted that you've chosen to come and be in worship this morning. And it is, as always, my great pleasure and privilege to be here with you. This morning, I was thinking about the fact that early in my ministry here at Centenary, I had shared with you that, well, several years ago now, I had had an opportunity to speak with the District Committee on Ordained Ministry as I sought to become a certified ministerial candidate. And over the weeks that preceded that meeting, I spent many hours answering a group of questions designed to clarify and communicate my call to ministry. Now to say that the process was a stretching exercise is putting it mildly indeed. Nine questions and 15 pages of single spaced text later, I had synthesized my entire spiritual life into a mere 6,500 words. And y'all think that I'm lengthy on a Sunday morning. Oh, what an exercise that was. But during that process, I learned a great deal about my life and my Christian walk. So this week, as you may have already surmised, I've chosen to repeat myself. I called this sermon, It Bears Repeating, because this morning, I would again like to share part of one of my essays with you because it is indeed the foundation for my personal ministry. It is so much that foundation that during last summer at Course of Study, my, my final year of those studies, my last assignment was to define my personal theology and that assignment brought me full circle to re-embrace these same core theological perspectives. Frankly, I wasn't surprised, but I hope that by revisiting this message, it serves not only as a reminder of core lessons we've shared, but it also highlights that Centenary UMC is connected to the other churches in our conference and denomination through shared theological tenets and perspectives. Because frankly, we are all part of something much bigger than just us. And we all share fundamental truths and that always bears repeating. So as I read you part of what I wrote that day so many years ago, you will indeed recognize threads from messages that I've regularly shared with you over these last four years. Because while I was writing, I realized that I have some pretty definite and consistent ideas about Christianity that center on two gospel readings in particular. The first comes from the great commandment, Matthew chapter 22, beginning with verse 37. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, the second part is part of our lectionary selection this morning. It is the Great Commission. And for me, I center on Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. You see, Christianity for me 
is being grounded in both mission and evangelism. Now, evangelism is one of those words that people get tripped up on. Simply put, a word to use in place of evangelism is outreach. So for me, mission is defined as a combination of these two gospel passages and is best encompassed in a combined statement. Mission is to reach out to the hurting in loving compassion, offering what you have in service to others, and to go into the entire world to take the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, within the Great Commandment and the Great Commission, you will find the five key functions of the church. They are worship, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and evangelism, or if you'd rather, outreach. So that in a nutshell, was the core message I shared with you in July of 2017. That helped you to define a mission statement for Centenary United Methodist Church. You declared that as part of the Upper New York Annual Conference, that Centenary UMC shares the vision and mission of being called to live the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be God's love with our neighbors in all places. You went on a step further by declaring that as a United Methodist Church in the Upper New York Conference, your purpose is to be called to action through knowing, growing, and going. But do you see the correlation with these two gospel passages and that thought of know, grow, and go? You see, as we fulfill the five functions of the church, we express our love for God and our love for people. In this way, we become, in, as a part of our knowing, clearer by our worship, closer by our fellowship, and purer by our discipleship. Now, discipleship is also part of our growing as we grow, we are also stronger by our mission and ministry. So that ultimately, as we have grown and are ready, we go and we become larger by our evangelism or through our outreach. But I want you to know a very simple fact this morning because as I said, evangelism is one of those words that people trip up a bit. Most of us will not be called to become a missionary in some foreign country. Now, some of you may, but most won't. Yet each of us has a mission in this life, and Jesus expects us to be a missionary, to carry evangelism of the Holy Word with us all the time. Jesus expects us to be about the business of making disciples where we are at any given moment. You as the Centenary United Methodist Church of Malone, New York are called to active ministry and mission here in this place, in this community, even during this time of social distancing, even in the face of this time of isolation. In the world in which we live, we are surrounded by Christians and non-Christians every day. Simply, some people know Jesus, some people don't. And in this sense, America is no different than foreign countries like India, China, or the continent of Africa. And yet, in fact, any place you go in this world, will, you will find two types of people, those who know Christ and those who don't. 
Jesus does not ask you to get on the very next flight to go to some foreign port, but Jesus does ask you to be about the mission and ministry of your faith. I've always believed that as a Christian, our mission field begins outside our door. And I've used that phrase many times, referring to outside the door of this beloved building. But the truth of the matter is, even in this time of isolation, the door in your own home is to what we are referring. That door can be a telephone receiver that you pick up and call a friend or a neighbor. It can be a mission as far as a postage stamp will take a note or a card or a letter to someone that you are reaching out in Christian love to touch, even virtually. The door is not specific. Understand that it is wherever we are. When Christ commanded us to go and make disciples, he wasn't asking us to make a special trip. He was charging us with being effective in all areas of our lives while we are going, not when we get around to going to some special place. My beloveds, remember go actually doesn't command us to go anywhere. In fact, in the original language, this commandment that Jesus gives to us is not go, but rather make disciples. So literally the scripture says, while you are going, I command you make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mission is what we do with our lives every day in every, day, in every possible way while we are living our lives, even in times such as these. So, my prayer today is that all of us have also come full circle, that we now understand more fully what Jesus is saying to each of us when he says, go therefore and make disciples. My beloved ones, may it always be so that while we are going today, and every day we carry Jesus Christ with us. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always as you become more deeply connected in your relationship with him. Peace be with you. Amen.